Awesome, man. My name is Wayne, and I'm an addict. Step two. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. You know, I had an experience this morning with a, an old friend, and uh, I hadn't seen him in the context of his church for a long time. And he uh, came up to me and back in the foyer area after the morning service. And uh, I saw him and I reached out to him and opened up my arms to give him a big hug. And when I gave him a big hug, he just, just fell apart, right? He just wept and wept and wept. And I held him and, and uh, talked to him about, let's get together, you know. And he, he said to me, he said, because of his tears and the way that he fell apart, he, he felt like a fool, you know. And I said, no, you're not a fool at all. I said, let's get together and we'll talk about this, right? And um, so this afternoon, after our um, annual meeting here at the church, I checked my messages and I had, a, I had an email on my phone. And believe it or not, <laughs> an email. And, and I answered it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I did. I, 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 I know you can't believe it, but it, it happened. <laughs> and I... The email was him um, apologizing to me for being, for making such a fool of himself, right? And and of course I I sent him back a a message just saying how much you know I loved him as a dear brother and and uh, that all of us need someone in our lives that we can be real with, right? That we can share what's really happening in our lives that we can share our feelings with that we can trust and just let them know that let's get together i had said well i'll i'd be glad to call you and and he said well i'll, I'll call you i'll call you so i'm praying that he will but i thought about that through the day and uh, thought about that in terms of step two and how for me uh, coming to believe and a power greater than myself was the most amazing miracle of all. Um, really coming to believe in a God that could transform my pain and my sorrow, right? Now this fellow was apologizing for what? He was apologizing for his grief. He just had his wife's funeral. A month ago she was young and it was totally um, totally unexpected right and uh, he had just had this tremendous tremendous loss but felt like he needed to apologize for sharing those feelings right what happens for us in our recovery journey is as we come to believe in a power uh, that is greater than ourselves, who can restore us to sanity, what that might look like, might look just like my friend this morning, right? It might mean that we actually have to get real, that we actually have to share what's going on inside our lives, that we might have to get honest. In fact, we know any of us who have been in this program for any length of time, we know that we have to get honest. We have to get real about who we are. And the best thing that can ever happen to us is we can get in touch with our feelings, right? And I love that about step two. Boy, oh boy, it really helps us to be set free. Our scripture tonight is just a, a brief passage from uh, Galatians uh, chapter one verses three through five, and I think this is really the heart of step two. And it seems so appropriate to share it with you tonight before we receive communion together. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. For Jesus gave his life 
for our sins. Just as God our Father planned, in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Now in this passage, this simple passage, this meditation verse for today could be considered the very heart of step two. It addresses every need and part of our lives at this beginning stage of our recovery. And if you're like me, and, and I'm, I think we're so much alike in so many ways, we'll come back to step two over and over and over again on our recovery journey. For me, it's steps one, two, and three. Someone the other day was asking me, well, when I'm going through a, a struggle, um, what should I do? And I said, well, for me, I go to the steps. Regardless of what's happening in my life, whatever struggle it is, you know, whatever's going on, I, I find great strength and comfort in the first three steps. Steps one, two, and three. I just work those steps. I work step 10, step, t uh, step 11, go back and do writing in my step four and five, and then talk to somebody about it uh, in my step five. And I think that this verse includes three things, just three important points I wanted to share with you tonight before we share in communion. But I think they're crucial uh, to our understanding of step two and to the spiritual dimension of this. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Now you know, and I've shared it over and over again over the years, that for, my, for me, my higher power is Jesus Christ. And uh, I know that some of us aren't at that point, and that's okay. That's okay. Wherever we're at, we're in the right place right here, right? We're in the right place. For me, I believe that this passage brings out that Christ voluntarily gave himself for me and for you. It was voluntary. Nobody forced him against his will. And God wants us to know that. First of all here, we see that Christ voluntarily died for me. Now as we're approaching Easter season, and part of the reason I wanted to share this passage tonight is that next Sunday is the first Sunday of Lent. And this is in preparation for Easter. We're preparing our hearts and our lives for this celebration of Easter, for the suffering of Easter. Even though we felt so unlovable and, and so unworthy so much of our lives, the truth is that God gazed across the centuries and loved us. He loved you and he loved me. Enough to allow his son, in fact, to send his son, to give his son, to die for us. And Christ came willingly, see? That's the amazing thing about it. Christ came willingly. He voluntarily died for you and for me. And then secondly, the heart of, this, of step two. Because he died for us, and rose from the dead, he now has the power to transform us. The power of transformation for you and for me is right there in the heart of our creator. You can't transform yourself. I can't do it. Some of us have tried, and I've had my old friends that I've run into over the years, and they're, they're blown away by the fact that I'm, that I'm still, you know, in the ministry and doing what I do now. I remember what they used to say, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget it, actually. They, they figured I was just trying to get off my charges, right? Just trying to uh, have the lawyer convince the judge and the jury that, uh, oh, no, Wayne is a new guy. Now, you, 
some of you know, as I do, that there's a lot of people who've used religion over the years to try to get out of jail, try to get out of trouble. Uh, and Pete, you know that. <laughs> You've seen it plenty. And, uh, and I wasn't one of those. Just, I mean, that's amazing. Not, not any credit to me, but I wasn't. It was all credit to God. I was one of the ones that really did get that jailhouse conversion, right? And uh, I, was a, I was a new person inside. I didn't want to be that old Wayne anymore, right? And it's, I've spent the last, my whole life trying to move out of being that old Wayne, right? And allowing God to, to transform me and to make me the new person that he created me to be. Um, I've come a long way, baby. But boy, I got a long way to go. You know, I'm finding that out every day of my life. But this is the thing that's so amazing about it. He has the power. Our higher power, our creator, Jesus, for me, he has the power to deliver us from this present evil age. That's a refreshing thing when you think of the world that we live in. With all of the things that that we see on the news and that we read in the newspapers and that we that we hear about that are going on in the world, right? God has the power to deliver us. The world around us is controlled and manipulated by the enemy of our soul, right? By the world we live in, by ego, to cause us continual struggle and temptation and harm, bringing harm, that's for sure. But the power of Christ, the power of Christ can set us free. The power of Christ can deliver us from the bondage of our addictions and our harmful behaviors, right? Whatever, whatever area it is that we've been in bondage to, we can be set free. That's the promise of God. And it's a one day at a time promise, right? It's what... What I do with that promise, what I do with that power that God offers to me. And the third thing here at the heart of step two, I believe, is Christ's power is not only able to deliver us, to empower us, but God the Father deeply desires this for each of us. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, right? This is God's will for us. There's not one of you, not one of us, that God doesn't want to bless, that God doesn't want to pour out his love and his power and his spirit in your life. Not one of us. Now, you may think, oh, no, Wayne, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. God doesn't love me. God can't love me. I did this and I did that. Oh, man, I know exactly how you feel. I do. And many of us here do. We've hurt people. We've done things that we're, we're ashamed of. And no one could ever maybe forgive us. But God loves us. God loves us in the midst of all of that. And we can know that love and that power because that is God's desire for us, right? That is God's desire. It's always been his desire for us. The Father deeply desires this for each and every one of us. God loves us. And it's God's will to save us. Where does that begin? To save us from ourselves, right? That's what I need more than anything. I need to be saved from myself. I'm my own worst problem. Anybody else say amen to that? Amen. <laughs> guy. <laughs> Bless you, guy. <laughs> I'm my own worst problem. And God knows that. And, and God stays right there with me every step of the way. I fall flat on my face, you know, skin my nose, and God is right there reaching out to me to lift me back up again. And the truth is that the successful person in this program uh, is the person that got up one more time 
that he fell down. Just keep getting up. Keep getting up, keep reaching out, and taking the hand of God, right? Your higher power. And, and that's, God loves us. And it's his will and always has been his will to save us. All that remains then is for us to respond. This is a free gift he's offering to us, right? The gift is free, but I have to receive it, right? I have to receive it. And of course, next week, we want to talk about that. Next week, we're moving to step three, right? Yeah. And so we'll be talking about receiving that gift. This is an amazing, an amazing passage of scripture and an amazing truth right at the center of step two 